I've been getting asked a bunch recently, where do largemouth bass move in the spring? I recently posted up a video of where spotted bass go from their winter to pre-spawn to spawn transition during the springtime. And I got lots of questions from you guys on what do largemouth bass do? Largemouth bass behave differently than spotted bass, obviously. And in my opinion, they behave in a more predictable manner. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be easier to catch. However, they're going to set up and move in a more predictable pattern than a spotted bass would. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through all of the steps of the largemouth bass transition from winter time to pre-spawn to spawn transition all during the springtime. And many of you guys know if you've been watching this channel for a while, but I used to live in Texas for a, a few years. So what better lake to show you guys on than legendary Lake Fork out in Texas to show you where these true giant largemouth bass move during their, their spring transition. One hundred and twelve pounds in five ounces with the third largest bag in the five ass living era here at Bassmaster. Again, you're guaranteed right. Bassmaster Elite Series champion, Lee Lucy. It's the same across the country. Again, if you've already watched the spotted bass video that I've posted. It is very similar. The principles are the same. Now the behavior of the individual species of bass is what's different. If you haven't watched that spotted bass video, I'll link it right here. But again, this is all about largemouth and let's go over to Lake Fork right now and I'll show you exactly how these largemouth move during the spring. So as you guys can see here, I'm gonna do another a map study to just break this down as clear as possible. As you guys can see here, I am on Lake Fork out in Texas. It is a 100% largemouth lake. It is a iconic. I'm sure if you bass fish at all, you guys know what this lake is, unless you're living under a rock. But the Bassmaster Elites were just here and they were in the perfect pre-spawn time to move. So to simplify this, again, I'm just gonna walk you through from winter pre-spawn, spawn, and what these largemouth are gonna do, what they're gonna set up on, and how to catch them. So let's just pick a creek here. Um, Golly, which one will we pick? Oh, goodness gracious, there's so many good ones. But uh, let's just pick this one right here. Now, in the wintertime, these fish are going to want to be in deeper water. It's more comfortable for them. They want to have access to deeper water. That's where they're going to spend a majority of their time out there. They're going to be super sluggish, super slow. And uh, these fish are just going to be, again, in their wintertime patterns. Let's pretend that, the, you know, they're out here. If you haven't been to Lake Fork, it's just a basically a timber field of the lake. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. You have to be very careful. But out here, there's a bunch of timber. And in the wintertime, these fish will be off of creek channels. They can be, you know, suspended out over this timber. They can be off deeper points. Again, they just want to have access to deeper water. So not all of them are going to be out deep. Let me be very clear about that. But a lot of them will be. And largemouth, again, are going to behave in a very similar manner. So for sake of example here, let's take a look at this creek and let's pretend that the fish from the winter are out here in, you know, let's say 30 feet of water, 20 feet of water, 40 feet of water, pick your poison, doesn't matter. Let's say they're out on the main lake, this group of fish that we're talking about specifically. So as pre-spawn approaches, these fish, same as my other video guys, and a lot of this, the principles remain the same but these fish are going to move along creek beds or creek channels. And let me zoom in even a little more here. You can see this blue line that kind of cuts back and forth here. That's the original creek channel. And so these fish are going to move from deeper water along this creek bed, same as every other bass. They're gonna use it as a highway and start to move their way back to spawn. 
Now, let me jump ahead a little bit here. The largemouth bass, 90% of them guys, at least, are going to spawn less than 10 feet of water. So they're going to look for shallow pockets, hard spots. Uh, God, I sh I've seen them um, spawn on stumps before, but most of those fish are going to be less than 10 feet of water. And in most cases, and at least what I've seen on Lake Fork, it's going to be less than you know seven, six, seven feet are most of the fish. So that eliminates a ton of water of where they can spawn. Again, very different than spotted bass. But these fish are all going to work into, you know, these pockets. And as you guys can see on my map, anywhere that's red is less than five feet. So that's kind of the areas that I'm looking for. Again, on this sea map, it's, it shows up very well. It's very easy to locate. But these largemouth bass are going to be up shallow. That's where they want to go. So now we know where they want to go. And again, we know how they're going to travel. It's just like cars on a highway. Uh, most cars, you know, maybe if you have a Jeep or something, you're going to go off road, but most cars are going to travel on that highway. And this river channel is no different than a highway. It's where most of the bass are going to travel. And the back of these coves for large mouse or pockets or shallow flats is the destination. So if you put your destination into Google Maps, you know, that's where you're going. You take the roads to get there. That's our destination. So if we know our destination for these largemouth, let's say they're moving into these, these pockets, any one of these, and we know the road they're taking, now it's our job to just figure out where along that journey or along that process these fish are. So I'll give you a few tips here. So let's again, pretend our fish are out deep and they're moving to the back of these pockets. So as we get into pre-spawn, as that water is getting into, you know, low 50s, mid 50s, those fish are going to start moving, especially in the springtime. I would say, golly, mostly February, if I had to put a time frame on this, these fish, maybe some even in January, depending on weather, not many, but most of the fish are probably going to start to move in February. And what they're going to do, again, is move along this creek channel and everywhere that you see a secondary point or large pieces of timber, that is where the largemouth bass are going to stop or use as stop signs along that path. It's like a rest stop or a gas station. Think of it like that. Again, if you're going on, you know, on a road trip, you have certain points that are perfect for stopping. You know, they accomplish a task. You're going to get food. You know, you're going to stop and refill up and get gas. Bass are no different. They're going to stop on these secondary points, creek bends, and they're going to feed up as, you know, as they move along their transition and as they continue to progress further back into their transition. So let's run through that real quick. Let's pretend they're out here. As I mentioned, here's a secondary point here. This would be a great place, great point to check. Then we come in here, we see this creek channel bending. I would check this secondary point here. Here's a, a, a great creek bend. So maybe this, this creek bend right here. Then here's another secondary point and this creek channel runs right into it. So that's a perfect example of a great stop sign for these bass that are moving back into here. And again, anywhere this creek bends is a great place to check. Again, it's a stop sign anywhere where that creek turns. It's where that current or any current that's left is going to break and it's going to force bait fish. And again, just everything moving in and out of that creek is going to move past that point and it gives a, a bass a great place to stop and ambush. Now, if you're still looking for the creek channel, you know, and you're having a tough time figuring it out, one, there's two, there's two ways you can find it. One is you can use your electronics. Again, this is an online map. This uh, is pretty accurate, but it doesn't always translate, you know, exactly one to one once you get on the lake. So what you can do is if you have electronics like side scan, down scan, stuff like that, you can actually idle this in your bass boat and go ahead and drop waypoints everywhere that you see, you know, the creek channel bend. It'll show up clear as day. You'll be able to see where that creek channel bends back and forth. And if you drop waypoints, you know, at every bend, you'll be able to look at your map and see everywhere that that creek channel turned, which again, every one of those turns is a stop point. Look for points that come right up next to that creek channel. 
that'll be a perfect place to, again, intercept those bass in their pre-spawn move. Now, the second way you can find that if you don't have any electronics whatsoever, let's pretend you have no clue, Lake Fork is a special place because it has timber, so this is only gonna work on timber lakes. However, because the timber is still standing, even when the before the lake was filled, the largest trees in a forest, if you go out and look, are the ones normally closest to water. So if you have an old creek bed and you want to go check it out, be my guest, you know, on land, but go look and those trees that are the biggest trees around that area are the ones right on the creek bed. And because again, they're getting the most water and it's no different when this lake was filled, even though these trees are dead, you'll be able to see, you know, that some trees are, you know, a foot wide you know, one is a foot and a half, one's two foot. And then boom, you look out over here and you see a tree that's two and a half, three feet. I mean, it's a huge tree stump. You know that that's probably close to the river channel. And if you look and down the line or, you know, around you, you can start to pinpoint where the biggest trees in the creek channel are. And that's going to be very important because visually, even if you have electronics, that's going to tell you where that original creek channel was. Those old trees, those big trees that grew there are right next to that river channel with the, you know, most amount of water. And that's, guys, 90% of the time, that's where most of the bass and some of the biggest bass in the lake are going to stage on those giant tree stumps. So again, they're going to work their way down this creek channel. Let's pretend they're going to do this all over the lake, but they're going to work their way down this creek channel. And again, there's going to be big stump here, big stump here, you know, big stump here, big stump here. And all of this is forest guys. Like it's just timber. It's just straight timber, but you'll be able to see again with your eyes, just follow the biggest trees and you'll be able to generally follow that creek channel. So that's a little tip for you guys. But follow that creek channel back again, hitting every turn and every point, and you should be able to intercept bass on their pre spawn, you know, transition into spawn. Most of you guys probably saw, but they had an elite event on Lake Forks recently in February, and a lot of the people who did really well in this tournament were on a pre spawn pattern. And if you paid close attention, a lot of these fishermen, especially in the top 10 or who finished in the top 10, were following these bass into these creeks because they were in pre-spawn. Again, they weren't in winter, they weren't in spawn, they were in pre-spawn, so they were somewhere in between, and they were following these bass in these creek channels. And as you saw, most of them were offshore, so not right on the bank, and they were using live scope, but it doesn't matter. It's beside the point. You can fish without live scope. It doesn't matter. It's just where the biggest fish were and most fish were during this tournament, again, because it was pre-spawn. So don't feel like you absolutely need it because you can absolutely go out and catch fish without it. But they were intercepting fish. Again, same thing along this creek channel, focusing on creek bends, secondary points, and large timber. That's all they were doing, guys. I mean, it's, it's textbook. Again, if I can't drill this point home enough, bass are going to be deeper in the winter. They're going to predictably, all most of them, go to shallow coves and spawning pockets there's no other no nowhere else they're going to go a small percentage of them you know might spawn you know closer to the main lake for sure off of main lake pockets and stuff like that absolutely a small percentage of them might spawn you know on timber stumps you know out in a little bit deeper water definitely can do that you know out in 10 12 feet i've seen some giant bass that are out there you know in 12 13 14 15 feet and they've been spawning, you know, five feet below the surface on the top of a giant stump that was broke off below the surface. So there are exceptions, obviously, but this is different again than spotted bass because a majority of the largemouth are going to the shallow pockets. It's plain as day. It's simple. Again, simple to say and where they're going, not simple to catch them always. But they're very predictable. So hopefully I haven't drilled that point home enough. And again, let's continue this. They're into pre-spawn. They're going to move back in here. They're going to pull off into these pockets. Absolutely here. Check all these pockets. Check all these pockets back here. Most definitely. And as you can see, if we kind of branch off this creek, again, work into some of these shallower pockets, these uh, spawning bays, stuff like that. 
So that's where they're going to spawn. Now let's talk about how these fish move based on weather conditions. So again, similar to that spotted bass movement video that I've I recently created, largemouth are similar in what they will do. So again, let's pretend the water's 52 degrees, let's say in this scenario. The water's 52 degrees, these fish are starting to come in from the main lake and they're gonna move up this creek. From there, let's say we get a warming trend. So the water is going to warm up and largemouth are very different again than spots. They are more affected by temperature changes. So just a degree or two can be huge. So largemouth are very affected by temperature. You wanna keep that in mind. So any warming trend, and what I mean by warming trend is anytime the water temperature has a warming trend. So if that water temp goes from 52 to 53, boom, you have a warming trend. If, you, if it goes from 52 to 55, even better. You have a large warming trend and you better believe that those largemouth bass will be moving. So any warming trend is going to push those fish closer to their final destination, which is again, these spawning pockets, which are up here. So these fish are going to move from the main lake. And what that means is again, they're going to stop on the points. They're gonna continue up these creek channels, stage in these creek bends, and they're going to move up to these spawning pockets. Now, again, they're using this, this river channel as a highway. That's really what you need to know about largemouth bass, again, they're using the river channel as a highway, using secondary points and stumps as stopping points. I'm drilling that home for you guys. That's all you need to know to intercept these fish when they're moving. But as I mentioned, a warming trend is going to push them back into these pockets. They're going to want to spawn. So if we get, you know, from 55 to, you know, 60, boom, 60 seems to be that magic number to draw the most fish. That's more in like March and April, I would say probably March for the most part, but March and April is going to push those fish, push those fish shallow to spawn. That's when you're going to get your largest waves of largemouth bass to spawn. Now, if we're still talking about pre-spawn, let's say our water temp, you know, is 55. We had that warming trend. These fish moved up and I mean, they're, they're getting ready. I mean, they're on these secondary points. There's a secondary point there. Maybe some of them even went up and started, you know, getting ready to spawn. They're up super shallow. If we get a cooling trend, and again, what that means is water temperature. So if we drop a degree or two or three, or the more the change, the worse it is for a largemouth. A cold front, you know, cooling water conditions can, but not always, shut down largemouth bass, especially Florida strain. So what they're going to do on a cold trend, it doesn't mean it's impossible to catch them. It just may be more difficult. But instead of these fish, you know, pushing up shallow into these pockets on a warming trend, what they're going to do, let's, let's pick this pocket right here. Or better yet, you know what? Let's pick, uh, we can do that pocket. It doesn't matter. So this pocket right here, what these fish are going to do is let's say where they were up there at 60 degrees or 55, what I said, like I said, as soon as there's a cooling, tr cooling trend, these fish are going to push out into the middle of the ditch or out into the middle of the creek channel. So you may have one day, again, if it's warm, and most of the fish are gonna be up shallow. You may be able to burn all this bank, just picking off fish, you know, throwing, you know, Senko, you can throw swim bait, you can throw crankbait, you can throw a jig. There are so many different things, swim jig, chatterbait. You can throw a bunch of different lures uh, to intercept these fish. You're just gonna have to experiment with that on the water. But these fish, let's say they're all up, most of them are up shallow. On that cold front, they're going to back off to this main creek channel again. And again, referring to that Bassmaster Elite Series event in February, you saw most of the guys that did well were catching them out in this river channel. And that's textbook, guys. It's textbook largemouth. Again, they were in pre-spawn, but even during the spawn, if you get a cold front, they're going to back off to deeper water. And again, suspend next to those giant trees or biggest trees that are in that timber field and deeper off of those deeper secondary points. Like again, I can't highlight enough. This one right here looks great. River channel comes into it and you have this secondary point. But that's really all there is to it, guys. I mean, largemouth are very predictable. 
I've been asked about it again. That's why I made this video a bunch on how they differ from spotted bass. They differ a lot in that they just behave more predictably, in my opinion. Again, though, it doesn't mean you can always catch them. So largemouth are going to set up there, you know, look for anything. They like cover and structure, look for docks, look for stumps, look for brush piles, look for blowdowns, look for grass lines. It does not matter what lake you're on, guys. These largemouth are going to follow the same principles, and they're going to set up on cover much more than spotted bass will. So it just makes them more predictable on where they're going to, you know, again, set up and where they're going to be. And then it's up to you to dial in, you know, what presentation and what depth they're in for that specific day. But to summarize again, very quickly, wintertime, they're going to be out, you know, in deeper spots, maybe deeper in this creek channel, deeper out over this timber, you know, in this uh, suspended as we move into pre-spawn, they're going to use the creek channel or creek bed as a highway, as we mentioned, just like our maps. And they're going to stop at any point, any secondary point that's next to the creek channel or any hard bend in the creek channel. There's kind of one there, a secondary point with a creek channel bend that's extra good. Here's a secondary point. And then again, if your lake has timber, or honestly, it doesn't matter if your lake has timber or not, but look for any stopping points, you know, along that creek channel, such as brush piles. If it's a brush pile lake, look for grass lines. If it's a grass lake, look for, again, timber. If you're on Lake Fork, look for giant timber. It does not matter what lake you're on. It does not matter what depth, guys. I can't emphasize this enough. Largemouth are going to move to the shallow pockets. Doesn't matter how deep the lake is. Doesn't matter if it's a hundred foot lake or a 30 foot at, the, at its deepest point. Those largemouth are going to push super shallow to spawn and there's nothing that's going to stop them. And now you guys know exactly what they're going to do. Hopefully that was super clear. If you guys liked this video and enjoyed it, please go ahead, drop a like down below and comment. What is your personal best largemouth bass? I'd be very curious to know. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the support. Subscribe to the channel and I will talk to you all soon.